So here. Lesson planning is one of the most time consuming things that teachers have to do. For Campbellsville University School of Education, there is a strenuous lesson plan template to fill out. This over prepares you and it makes it easier whenever you are actually in the classroom to teach. To plan the best lesson, you need to understand students' backgrounds, find your Kentucky academic standards, and write out your procedures. So here is what the first part of the template looks like. Now this looks a little bit different uh, than whenever I first started my journey in the education program as they have added the rubric for grading directly into the lesson plan and you'll see that later on. So to start you fill out your information. You need to fill it out right here. So you put your name, your student ID, whatever course it is, such as I am in classroom management, and that is ED41401. Then your assignment, whether it is planning a lesson, you're planning a unit, whatever, the date that it's due, you leave score blank. Now, you have to fill out the information for the school district and the class that you'll be teaching. So first, you'll fill out your school district. I will actually be student teaching in the fall. So for me, I would put Clinton County High School or Clinton County School District. Then your collaborating teacher. I will not reveal their name, but I will say Mr. Teacher. Grade level is 11. Number of students in the class with an IEP or number of students in the class. Excuse me, I was getting ahead of myself. So number of students in the class. So we'll say 20 students. So you would put 20 right here. Number of students with an IEP. Now, an IEP is an individualized education plan. This is for students who have some sort of a disability, such as like behavioral, uh, ADHD, ADD. That is what would go there. So say you had two students who had an IEP, you would put it there. And then number of gifted students, that's so like the gifted and talented. So you had two students for that, you put two here. And number of ELL, that is English language learner. So I know for a class that I have three who are ELL, so I would put three. Now, you should always put a lesson title. You will not always put a unit title. You always put a lesson title if you have a standalone lesson or if you're teaching for a unit. So your lesson title would go here and if you have a unit that you are planning you put the unit title here. And here is the rubric to follow. Your goal is to be an accomplished. So it's what most pre-service teachers are at but if you can get up to exemplary why not try. So, box one. This is where you're really going to start getting into the meat of your lesson plan. So, this is where you discuss your students' backgrounds. And as you can see, it says, identify your students' backgrounds, special needs, cultural differences, interests, and or language proficiencies. Discuss modifications and accommodations for these students. So, your... Background is like your IEPs, 504 plans, which has to do with like physical disabilities, such as being deaf or blind, um, your race, your socioeconomic status, any language differences, and any interest in, for the students, such as maybe this class really enjoys a sport, or maybe this class really has a lot of students who enjoy art. So now you're going to write down what all you are going to do to help students succeed through accommodations and modifications. So that could be you are including coloring in a lesson because you have students who enjoy art. Then going back to the students with IEPs or 504 plans, they have specialized modifications and accommodations for them separate that you have to follow by law. You will have a corresponding teacher to help you do this, 
but you will have to make sure that you include that in your lesson plan. Now, Kentucky Academic Standards. Here is what a unit plan will look like So it would go right here, here, and here, go A, B, and C. So to find your Kentucky Academic Standards, you simply go to https colon forward slash forward slash kentuckystandards.org. You're going to click Explore Standards and then find your content. I am a high school social studies major, so that is what I would use. So then you look in, after you click on that, you'll find table of contents, find whatever grade level, put it in to search, go to your United States History Standards, which for me, it begins on page 148. And now there, then I will teach, I will find a standard to match what I'm going to teach. So... For this, I'm going to focus on the progressive and gilded age and finding it narrowing down. We're going to find a uh, standard that has to do with political, economic, and social impacts in the gilded age. And there is a standard, and it is hs.uh.ce.1, which is analyze the political, economic, and social impacts of industrialization on the United States between 1877 and 1945. That best suits what the lesson is that I will be teaching. So that would go right here into section B. So it also says, and measurable learning objective. A measurable objective is a breakdown of the standard with a measurable goal. In the School of Education, we can break that down using SWABOT, which stands for Students Will Be Able To Statements. This is much like I can statements, which you may be more familiar with. For a standard, for this standard, we can say SWABOT, student will be able to, Analyze political, economic, and social impacts of industrialization in the United States with 80% accuracy. Box 3 is a continuation of student background in a way. It explains their background knowledge. So this is where you will find out what they already know on the subject. You can do this by using a pretest. You want to make sure that you include any ways that you hack into their background knowledge and any information that you obtain. Box four is the beginning of procedures. Formative assessments are what are used in the lesson to check for student progress. Class discussion can be used as formative assessment, although it is hard to measure. Guided notes can be collected as student work for formative assessment. Just be sure to give them back to the students so that they have that resource. Also be sure that accommodations or modifications are made for students and they are included in this box. Box 5 is your resources. So this would be a guided notes sheet, a slideshow presentation, any links that are used such as a timer or a music link, any kind of internet link, copies of handouts, anything goes right in this box. This is so if a sub is teaching your class, they have all the resources they need in one place. Box six is a big one. This is where you write in paragraph form the lesson procedures. What is being done step by step by teaching your lesson. Include anything as little as handing out a paper at the door, to setting a timer, to when the slideshow begins, or to when to start group work. You have times, you have descriptions, very detailed descriptions of what you're doing or what students are doing. The possibilities are endless and it's very difficult to have too much in this box. 
So there is actually another box on the lesson plan template that includes lesson reflection. This is simply another box that is a separate document actually that has only to be filled out if you teach the lesson. So there is a lot of work that goes into planning a lesson, but if student success is our goal, our efforts with the detailed plans like this make their learning worth it. Once leaving the Campbellsville School of Education, you'll see that teachers don't actually use lesson plans like these. Rather, they just have bulleted lists with minimal words to get through the day. But by doing the School of Education okay. type of lesson plan first, your bulleted list will make much more sense and be much easier to follow after a while.